Doctrine of Baptisms is a really good uh, class and it precedes baptism in the Holy Spirit. So it gives us some understanding so that when we go, go into that important lesson of baptism in the Holy Spirit, we've got the groundwork is laid. Okay, the Bible teaches about at least three different baptisms. First of all, the baptism into Christ. And we're going to talk about each one of these. Number two, baptism in water. Number three, baptism in the Holy Spirit. Uh, the, the Bible makes reference to other baptisms like the baptism in fire, but doesn't necessarily explain what that is. And so, if you have a doctrine about baptism of fire, it's possibly hyperbole because the Bible lays no clear definition uh, for that one. Okay, we're going to go ahead. Now, let's talk about that word baptize for a minute. Baptize means immerse. In other words, immersing something into something else. For example, in ancient Greece, when a ship uh, sank, they said it baptizo. It sank under the waves. It was it immersed. It you know it was gone down under the waves. And so that's where we get that word baptizes from the Greek word baptizo. All right, so. Um, now we're going to go ahead and shift our focus into that first baptism we talked about, which is a ba the baptism into Christ. Okay, 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says, For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one ba body. Now we're going to talk about that first baptism, which is the baptism into Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says, For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body. And of course, He's talking about us being baptized into the body of Christ, placed into the body of Christ, immersed into the body of Christ. When we are born again, we're no longer in the flesh, but we are in Him, in Christ. And so, uh, so that's our, the very first baptism. And what we have is the Holy Spirit. As we become born again, the Holy Spirit takes us and He places us into or baptizes us into the body of Christ. We're no longer on our own. We're no longer in the flesh. We are in the body of Christ, and that's where we stay, in Him, in Christ. When you read through the scriptures, you'll find all sorts of these in Him realities. Um, and just So take note, whenever you read that, through Him, in Him, by Him, those are all talking about those realities that are now, uh, the, you know, those realities that we live in, in Christ. Okay, so... When we, talk, when we think about baptism, first of all, you have the person doing the baptizing, then you have the one being baptized, and then you have the element into which they're being baptized. Okay, so uh, in the case of the Holy Spirit, Christ is doing the baptizing, and we are immersed into the Holy Spirit. And so that's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then what, again, when we the baptism we just covered, the baptism into Christ, we have the Holy Spirit baptizing us into the body of Christ. And of course, and then we'll go on to talk about water baptism, of course, in just a moment. Okay. All right, let's pick it up here. The next baptism is the baptism in water. Jesus commanded his followers to be baptized with in water and in the Holy Spirit. In the Great Commission, we are told to go into all the world, preach the gospel, and baptize all who believe. All right, Matthew 28, 19 says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, and then throughout the book of Acts, we see the church. When someone was saved, I mean, immediately they were baptized. And, uh, like, if you think of it... Um, uh, it's just very normal. I mean, Jesus said, you know, when you become born again, get baptized. See, the thing about baptism, especially in other cultures besides for our Western culture, they have a lot more meaning. Because think of, think of this. If you're in a society where everybody is a Hindu or they're a Buddhist or they're a Muslim, what happens when somebody is baptized? That's a clear when they're, when they're baptized as a believer in Christ, that's a clear demarcation. It's a split with the old life. I was a Muslim, a Hindu, a Buddhist, I, but now I am born again. I'm a Christian. I'm a follower of Christ. So that's where that baptism takes on so much significance in a person's life. Because no longer are they a Muslim. 
No, they are Christian. They are in Christ. They belong to Him. And that's why that water baptism, you know, takes on so much significance, especially in, in other cultures. All right. So that person used to be a pagan, whatever. Now they are a Christian. And that baptism was that clear, was that clear signpost, that event that mark the end of the old life, the beginning of the new life in Christ. All right, cool. So something to remember about things like baptism and also communion, they're ceremonies in the church or sacraments of the church. And the thing is, is that, you know, a ceremony can be empty or it can have a lot of meaning. Not only that, you know, there's a huge amount of significance and there's something that you can really get you know, see God do in your life as you are baptized as a new believer, as you celebrate communion in church. I mean, there's, you know, rather than just being an empty ceremony, there's incredible things that can happen that can take place during those times where, where God can really do a work in your life through grace. If you're a new believer and you're going to be baptized, just really trust God for something really significant to take place in your heart and your life during that time. So think about communion for a minute. Jesus said, do this as often as you remember me. And so when we, when we have communion, what we're doing is we're remembering what Jesus accomplished on the cross when he shed his blood and when his body was broken. When we talk about baptism and even, and even communion, those are both ceremonies. But, and the thing is, is that you know, we really need to believe God, either when we're baptized or when we celebrate communion, that something specific is going to happen. A work of grace by faith, really trusting God to impart something, to do something in our life, uh, something meaningful and important. Think about communion for a minute. Communion is a time that we remember what Jesus did for us. He shed His blood for us. Our sins Past, present, and future are forgiven. We stand forgiven in right standing with Him, and His body was broken for us. The Bible says that by His stripes we are healed. Communion is a perfect time that we can just really see healings and miraculous things take place in our lives because we remember what Jesus did for us. And the same thing with baptism. If you're a new believer and you're going to be baptized, believe that something really incredible is going to happen during that time, that the Lord's really going to impart something to you, do something special in your heart and life. Okay, let's move forward. We're going to talk a little bit more about water baptism. Mark 16, 16 says, let's start with verse 15. It says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He, that, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Alright, so we clearly see that, uh, now baptism is not a requirement for salvation. Believing is. Believing the gospel, believing the good news about what Jesus did for you is a requirement. Really important stuff when we talk about baptism. This is, this is what we celebrate as happening. When we, ha when we celebrate baptism. Romans 6, 4 says, Therefore, we were buried with Him, we were buried with Him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. When we are baptized, as we go down under the old, as we go down in the water, we are celebrating the death of our old man, our old self, our old nature, uh, is died and is crucified with Christ. And just as when Christ was raised from the dead, He was raised to newness of life, as we come up out of the water, we also are raised to newness of life. Okay, Romans, let's move on to Romans 6.6. 6. Knowing this, that our old man, this is our old nature, our old, our old sin nature, was crucified with Him, that the body of sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves to sin. And we're going we're gonna to deal with that a little bit more. Okay, let's move on to Romans 6.11. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead, indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So no longer are we dead in our sin and trespasses, but we are in Christ. We, we celebrate that newness of life. Let me just read that scripture one more time. Reckon yourselves indeed to be dead unto sin, but alive to God. So 
in our new life, we're dead to sin, but we're alive to God. You see, the thing is, is that Jesus, when He died on the cross and shed His, when His blood was shed, the power of sin over our lives was broken. That's what happened when His blood was shed. Okay, we're going to go on to read. Uh, we're going to go on to read Romans seven one. You see, uh, we're going to talk about the fact that we are no longer under the law, but we're in. But we're as being in Christ, we are under grace. Okay, or do you not know, brethren? And I speak to those who know the law, that the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives. And so, being that we are that we died with Christ, the law no longer has dominion over us because that old man, that old man has died. Romans seven four says, "Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead." To the law through the body of Christ, that you may be married to another, to him who raised him from the dead, that we should bear fruit to God. So in other words, we died, when we died with Christ, when we identified with him, with his death, we died to the law. Now let's go back to Romans 6. We're going to read Romans 6, 14. This is an incredible scripture. Romans 6, 14 says, for sin, now this is so good, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Now you see the law, the law represents our ability. And you see when people were under the law, you know, they had to live up to the law, but they had to do it by their own ability. And of course it was impossible, and nobody lived up to the law. And so, but you see now that we are in Christ, we're under grace. And now grace represents God's ability. God's ability. Grace, the definition of grace is unmerited favor. And it also means divine influence uh, in the heart. So that's God's power working from the heart. God's ability working from the inside out in our, in our lives. Alright. So we're no longer under the law, but we're under grace. And so now... Grace is God's ability. So we have God's ability working in our life. Okay. And being that we have been raised up in Christ, we have new life in Him. Let's turn to Ephesians 2, and we're going to read verses 1 through 7. This is, this is so good. It just talks about our new life in Him and what happened when we were born again. Okay, Ephesians 2, verses 1 through 7. And you... He made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked, according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. You see, you see, before we came to Christ, we we were living for ourselves, we were living for the prince of the power of the air, we were we were not living for him. And it says, verse 3, Among whom you also once conducted yourselves in the lusts of the flesh, fulfilling uh, the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But now, verse 4, But God, thank you, Lord, but God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love, which with he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. And verse 6, and this is what happened after we were born again. And raised us up together. Now, not only to new life in Christ, but he raised us up and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. That's where our position is. It's in Christ. It's in the heavenlies. That, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness toward us in Jesus Christ. That's just so awesome. Okay, we're also going to we're going to turn now. We're going to read about this new life that we have in Christ. Uh, Colossians two twelve. All right. All right. Colossians two twelve. Okay. Buried with Him. In baptism, in which you were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised you from the dead. So that's us. We are no longer dead in our sins and trespasses, but we are alive to God. We are alive to Christ. Dead to sin, alive to God. Just like it says in, in Romans 6.11. Alright. 
Okay, now we're going to move on to, we're going to talk about this new, new creature that we've become, this, this brand new person that we've become. 2 Corinthians 5.17, I'm sure you know that one by heart. If you don't, memorize it. Alright, 2 Corinthians, and we're going to read another scripture in 2 Corinthians 5 as well. Alright, 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, remember we talked about in Him, by Him, through Him, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, therefore, uh, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, new creature, new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So, as we became born again, we became this brand new person. The person that we were before Christ doesn't even exist anymore. He died with Christ on the cross, and so we we became this brand new person in God. Alright, here's the other thing. You see, when Jesus died on the cross, the Bible says that He became sin. Let's read uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21. This is the great exchange. It says, For He made Him who, know, who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Remember, this is one of those in Him realities. He became sin, we became the righteousness of God in Him. You see, when God sees us, He only sees us as righteous. He never sees us as anything but righteous because we are in Christ, and in Christ we are completely righteous. And remember that righteousness talks about rightness or right standing with God. He will always see us as the righteousness of God in Him because that's what He accomplished when Jesus died on the cross. That's the great exchange. He became sin, we became right, the righteousness of God in Him. So, this is all just really, really good stuff. We're brand new creatures in Christ, and so that's why uh, water baptism is so important, because we, we celebrate all those truths in water baptism. Hey, thank you so much. Please read along in the book. Uh, take time and read, read all of the material, and then the, the next class will be Baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's a good one. Don't miss out. Thank you so much.